Hello and welcome to another episode of Unstuck with Hypnopunk Transformation with Edge. Tonight's episode is entitled How to Be a Man. If you're a lady, if you're a woman and you listen to this, don't be intimidated or put off by the title because there's going to be a lot of interesting things that you will appreciate as well. But just before we get into it, I'd like to thank all of you that have left five-star reviews on iTunes or whatever method that you listen to these podcasts with comments. It is greatly appreciated. As you know, I put these podcasts out there each and every week for you free of charge and give you as much gold and condensed information as I can with all the bullshit taken out. All I ask for you is if you enjoy these podcasts, continue to listen for free. Tell your friends and family about it, pass on the message and just leave a five star review with some comments because it inspires me to put out more content because I know you're listening and you're getting something through this experience. And also to sweeten the deal, if you are indeed enjoying these shows and you've left your reviews and comments, I'd like to offer you a power session. It's a 13 minute Skype or telephone session with my good self. Please bear in mind, this is not a therapy session. This is not a hypnosis session. This is not a session for you to bitch and complain about, oh my God, I'm victimizing myself. How tough my life is, oh dear. No, it's a session where we talk and we brainstorm for about 30 minutes in my uh, inevitable, no bullshit way in teaching you and telling you t actual practical skills that you can use to become unstuck in your life in whatever this particular area is and ascend to the next level. If you'd like it and you'd like it for free, then just see, send me a screen screenshot of your review at mail at lukenosis.com that's mail m-a-i-l at lukenosis l-u-k-e-n-o-s-i-s dot com now on to the show how to be a man so i already know straight up front this 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 podcast probably going to get me the most amount of heat uh through any podcast i've done so far and so be it if you want to send me hate mail feel free to do it because if you're talking about me now's the time i'm going to make you speak louder um, I know this one's going to ruffle some feathers out there and quite frankly I'm sick of uh, playing nice. <laughs> you think I've been hardcore up to this point? I've been holding a lot back and I'm done with that bullshit now. Today's show is called On Being a Man or How to Be a Better Man. And one of my frustrations out there in the world is with millennials out there who walk through life um, being beige. Not being black, not being white, but being very beige. Trying to be everything to everyone all of the time. Like when children are at school and they're participating in a sporting activity and they lose. Yet they still get a nice little award that says, hey, congratulations, you know, you didn't really lose. You just come second. Yeah, what if it's a game with only two teams you did loss? You came, you are the number one person who lost. And guess what? In life, we do lose from time to time. Everything is not rainbows. Everything is not beautiful unicorns. Sometimes life fucking sucks and it is tough. And I'm sick of the bullshit, the earthy, crunchy stuff now when it points to um, men not being allowed to be men. Now, some people in their warped mind and through social conditioning and in fake news think, well, when he's talking about being a man, he means men should be abusive, that the men should be angry, men should be racist, men should be violent, men should hate women, men should hate gay, gay people, transgender people. I'm not saying that at all. That's absolute bullshit. When I'm talking about being a man, it has nothing to do with any of that stuff. Hate mongering out there. It's bullshit. But in my life, I'm 38 now, there's been a, a very interesting and saddening thing that's happened over the last five to ten years where it's not okay to be a man in society, that men are having to be watered down and pussify themselves through fear that feminist hate groups will come after them because it's not okay for a man to have an opinion, for a man to be a man. We're taught now as men, it's not okay to have desires, not okay to have sexual desires. It's not okay to express ourselves. It's not okay 
to be direct. It's not okay to be honest. It's not okay to stand up for ourselves. It's not okay for us to voice our opinions, say no more. I disagree with this. This is bullshit. I'm not going this way. I don't want to do this. No, I don't agree with this. No, I'm not going to buy my uh, my Starbucks $6 coffee every day with uh, vanilla and honey in it because everyone else is doing it. I'm not going to listen to music that I secretly as a man dislike, but to please the women around me or other millennial friends out there, I'm going to water myself, myself down because I don't want to be shunned by society for saying, hey, this is bullshit. I don't like this. I'd rather listen to some hardcore rock and roll. I'd rather be a man and all a man is. And I'm telling you right now, if you're a man and you listen to this, it's OK to be a man. It's okay to be a man. It's 2018. And I know everything out there says it's not okay for you to be a man. I'm telling you, it's okay to be a man. And what are the, con what are the fundamentals, the 10 or so traits that, that make a man? And I am borrowing literally here from David Delta and his book, um, Way of the Superior Man, along with my own ex experiences. One of the first things is be mission based. If you're a man, you're listening to this, be mission based. What does that mean? It means whatever your purpose, whatever your mission in life is the most important thing to you. Are you ready? I know I'm going to get some heat right now, but it's okay. I know they're going to fire bullets at me right now, but I got my bulletproof jacket on. What does that mean? It means your mission is more important than your wife, your girlfriend, your children. Your mission, your purpose on life, why you are here, your unique soul print on what you're supposed to do is the most important thing. It's more important than everything. It has been my experience and a long experience with women that when you place a woman on a pedestal and you make her the most important person and thing in your life, they may think that they want that in that particular time. Oh, I just want a man to make me the most special person in the world and he loves me more than anything else. But secretly over time, they begin to hate you and resent you because they figure you're a loser. That if they're the most single, most important thing in, their, in, in your life is, is, is your woman and not your mission, they start to resent you and think, who is this loser? He's making me the number one most important thing in the whole of his life. That's not who I fell in love with. That's not who I felt these chemical reactions of attraction to. It was because he had a mission. He had something more important than him and more important than me. He had a mission, a purpose for life. So if you're a man and you don't have a mission out there, I'd argue if you're even really a man. Yeah, you may have a dick, you may have balls, and you may have more testosterone than the opposite sex. But if you haven't found your mission, stop. Stop whatever you're doing now. Go into a dark room, sit down, and ask your unconscious mind, what is your mission? That's the first thing you need to do. And well, again, what is another quality of a man that's sorely lacking in today's society? Leaders, a man that will lead. And again, I am not saying with violence. I am not saying with racist abuse. I am not saying with sexism. I'm not saying with homophobia. I'm not saying any of this bullshit. I mean a man that steps up and leads. A man that's like, you know what? I am the leader here. I'm the leader in this relationship. I'm the leader in my own life. I'm going to make decisions. And I know I'm going to ruffle feathers now, but hey, who gives a fuck? Guys and ladies that are listening, how many times have you wanted to go to a restaurant and you've asked your man, hey, where are we going to go tonight? And your man's been like, oh, I don't know. Where do you want to go? And you're like, well, I, I don't know really where I want to go. I could go here. I could go here. And your man's like, yeah, we could do either of those things. And secretly as a woman, you just you want to put your input in. Absolutely. But at the same time, you want your man to make a decision and say, we're going to go here. And if you vehemently disagree as a woman, you will tell him, hey, that place sucks and that's OK. But you want your man to at least make a fucking decision in the moment. It's what women want most of the time, guys, whether they admit it or don't. In my experience of working with many women and having many special, amazing women in my life, be a leader, make fucking decisions. Even if the decision's wrong, you made a fucking decision and you stood by it. Don't be afraid to lead in your life, at work and in your relationship. Another thing, another thing we're taught in society is men now it's not okay to be angry let's talk about our feelings our hurt and our pain all the time all oh, anger is bad anger makes you abusive no as a man we are angry 
It's just inbuilt into us. We could have had what you thought is the most perfect life, yet we are still have this fucking rage inside of us. Now, I don't mean you go out and you hurt people and you abuse people. I am not saying that. But as a man, a man that's worked in personal development for many years, a man that's helped many people, I still have a huge amount of fire inside of me and it comes out in many different ways. We're taught as men it's not okay to have anger. It's not okay to express that anger to men or to women. And again, I'm not talking about abusing women or anything of that sort. But I'm talking about if you're with your woman and she pisses you off, you tell her, hey, you're pissing me off right now. And you don't always have to sugarcoat this stuff. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be an angry man. It's okay to be in that place sometimes. And it's okay to express that. It's inbuilt into us all. And all society tells us it's not okay to be that way anymore. I'm telling you, it's there. You can work through it. You can limit it. You can reduce it. And it's always going to be there on some level. And for some of us, it can be really fucking useful for helping us motivate in our life. Another thing, another quality that's sorely lacking for men in today's society is risk takers, adventurers. Every man wants to grow his beard, and yes, I know I have a beard as well, but I grew a beard for a very, very different reason, because I look good. <laughs> and without a beard, my face looks more too much like a 13-year-old boy. It makes me look better. I didn't grow it because everyone else was growing it. In fact, I held off growing a beard for many, many years, because didn't want to be like everyone else and these fucking millennials out there that are pussified it just disgusts me a real man takes risk calculated risk he is an adventurer he'll stake all the chips he'll put all the chips into the game he'll jump out of the airplane with that parachute on he'll go up to that woman he perceives is out of his league or beautiful and ask her for a date he'll cross over the road sometimes not at the exact crossing Sometimes he'll grow left when everyone's going right, but he will take risks because ultimately a man's most fundamental, most important value in his life at his core is freedom. Now, some of us won't admit to this because we're afraid that we're going to upset you women out there, that we're going to upset the haters on Facebook, the people that are so controlled by social conditioning that we can't do these things. Well, you can do these things and they're inside right now. Be a risk taker. Be an adventurer. Take risks every day. Don't just sit on your ass and meditate every day and do nothing. Do something. Be a fucking man. Show your dick. I don't necessarily mean you're going to pull it out in polite society because that would be just stupid. Don't do that. It's a metaphor, ladies and gentlemen, before you take everything I'm saying literally right here. Be a fucking man. It's OK to be a man in 2018. I'm telling you. And it sounds like I'm the lone voice that says this. But men out there, it's OK to be a man. And trust me, a lot of the women that I meet out there desperately, desperately want there to be men and not some castrated mark out there who is a millennial who complains everything and is way too in touch with their feminine side, where they've gone the polar opposite, where they've lost all their masculinity. Hey, another thing as well, another step to being a man, willingness to emote. Yeah, willingness to emote. Hey, sometimes guys, we're sad, we're allowed to be sad. If we're angry, we're allowed to be angry. You don't have to have that stiff upper lip as people in my country, Britain, are told from a young age. You don't have to be angry all the time. You don't have to be closed down all the time. You also do not have to be happy all the time and talk about, oh, yeah, my life is great. Now nah, it's not so great. And you know it. Be real. Be real about where you are. Then you have the ability to overcome it. As a real man, you will emote, risk emoting your feelings. That doesn't mean you're crying around your woman every day about how bad the world is and a victim, but it means that you're a man and you can emote being happy, being sad, being angry, being loving, being pissed off, being excited. The whole cornucopia of it, the whole kaleidoscope of it. The Neapolitan, if you remember those ice cream from England, don't know if you have them in the rest of the world where it was the um, pink ice cream, the chocolate ice cream, which was brown, and the white ice cream, which was, uh, I guess, some type of vanilla. All the colours of the rainbow, but a manly rainbow. Another thing, another thing that we're taught, it's not okay to be straightforward in society as a man. 
Women, I love you. I love women. I love the women in my life. I love you. You're fucking amazing. You make the world a better place. However, you're not the most straightforward of people out there. But instead of trying to change who you are as a real man, I accept who you are and that you are complicated. And a lot of the time you don't even know why you're feeling the way that you're feeling or why you're doing the way that you're the things that you're doing. I don't say that to be condescending on any level. I spent many years with many different women that I could see were in some kind of turmoil or turmoil or pain. And as a man that loved them, I wanted to pull them out and I wanted to save them. And it basically ended up pissing them off even more. So as a man, realise that your woman is going to go through a hurricane of different emotions and rather than try and change her and try and make a frog into a bird, so to speak, allow your woman to be your woman. She is her woman. She's going to be who she is. She's going to do what she does. She's going to seem crazy at times. She's going to do things that in our logical mind as a man, it doesn't make sense because we do not have a female brain. Instead of trying to change them or make them someone they're not, just love them accept who they are and you be the tree you be the tree why they are oftentimes the emotional hurricane be straightforward guys be straightforward and direct in the way that you deal with yourself in the way that you deal with men in the way that you deal with women some people will feign shock because they're not used to someone being as direct as you it will ruffle some feathers because a lot of people need that softener fuck that be a man be straightforward go for what you want ask for what you want you're not always going to get it this is life but at least fucking ask for it and go for it and realize it's okay to ask for it and at least make attempt at going for it Another quality of a real man is the protector of loved ones. On some level, women want to know that you can protect them. Does that mean you have to have 10 black belts, a UFC fighter, 240 pounds of ripped muscle? No, it does not mean that. But on some level, a woman needs to know that you can protect her on some level, even if it's just an illusion. It's an attraction it's an attraction switch in many, many women that many women are aware of and a lot of women, even more so, are not so aware of. But the protector of loved ones, that your woman knows that you will protect her, whether that's physically, whether that is verbally, whether that is with your energy, whatever it is, your woman needs to know that. Your woman needs to feel safe when she is around you. That's one of the gifts that you give women. And no women, before you send me the hate mail, I'm not saying you're weak and that you're a damsel in distress and you have no power. I'm saying you have incredible power, but at a deep-rooted evolutionary level, that's one of your attraction switches. That, yeah, you can look after yourself and protect yourself, but one of your attraction switches is a man that will love and protect you, whether you want to admit it or not. As a man, as mentioned earlier, but let's go into a bigger, a bigger picture of this. As a man, our fundamental deepest value is freedom. The freedom to do what we want, be what we want, with whoever we want, whenever we want to do it. But we're taught into taught in society it's not okay to do that. We've got to get married and have 2.2 children. We've got to have a job that we probably hate that pays the bills where we work for the government 9 to 5 every day. Get that mortgage, get that house in the suburbs and secretly there's like that rusty screw inside our brain inside our heart where we're doing everything we're told we're supposed to do yet we feel that something is wrong something is rotten in our brain in our soul you know what it is it's you gave up your freedom that's why you're unhappy you gave up being a man you gave up your freedom of doing whatever you want, whenever you want it, as long as you're not outwardly going out of your way to cause physical damage to people. Freedom. And on a side note, women out there who are listening to this, thank you. I hope you're getting something from this as well. I told you you would. What's the number one quality in a woman? It's different. Fundamentally, the number one quality in most women, a fundamental evolutionary level is what? Love. Love. That's the fundamental, deepest value for a woman is love. In a romantic relationship, relationship with their friends, relationship with their children, is love. As men, it's not. It's freedom. We still want love, but freedom's our number one value. It's different. That's why men and women oftentimes have problems in communicating with one another. Because we both, on some level, want completely different things as our highest value. But we also want love and that connection as well another thing men out there 
it's okay to be polarizing. It's okay for them to love you, the world I'm talking about. It's okay for them to hate you, but choose a fucking side and be polarizing and make them speak louder than you. Don't be beige. Don't be the man, the middle man that kind of falls into the background. Be polarizing. Pull your dick out. And once again, I'm not saying that you really pull your dick out. It's a metaphor, ladies and gentlemen. Be polarizing. Be who you are. And people are going to like it and people are not going to like it and be okay with either one because they're not going to stop you from being who you are and going for your freedom out there. Don't be afraid if you're not pissing someone off or if you are pissing someone off. I learned a long time ago, if I'm not pissing off at least one person a day, I'm not investing enough in my life. Do it. Don't be afraid to be a man. Don't be afraid in 2018 to be a man, to go for what you want, to express your anger, to lead, to take risks, to be straightforward, to call people, including yourself, on your bullshit, to make your mission more important than your children, your wife, your boyfriend if you're homosexual, even yourself, your mission needs to be stronger than it, that you are the protector of loved ones. Even if that loved one is only you in your life right now and you have no family. That you understand that on some fundamental level your highest value as a man is freedom. There's polarities in life. There's a North Pole, there's a South Pole. There's positive and negative with magnets, with batteries. It's the same with men and women. There's positive, there's negative, there's different polarities. There's masculinity on one polarity point and the opposite polarity point is femininity. Neither is a better. I would hate to live in a world where there was no feminine energy and femininity. It would be a far darker place. And in its softness is beauty and great strength and it makes the world a better place, more balanced. It's beautiful. But on the opposite of that is masculinity. Masculinity is being a man, going for what you want, calling people on their bullshit, including yourself, having that mission in your life, more important than everyone and everything, including yourself, being a leader, have the willingness to emote, being an adventurer, realizing that this is what a man is. It's not someone who's abusive to people. It's not someone who's violent to people, but it's somebody Somebody that does not allow the world to tell them who to be and what to be because it's what social conditioning says is the polite thing to do right now. It's a polite thing to do, yet more women are in therapy now than any time in history, oftentimes about the romantic relationships, talking about how it's not working. If this whole thing about feminizing ourselves and depolarizing ourselves was was correct, and that's how oftentimes we're told in uh, social media and fake news how to be, then there would be less problems in relationships. There would be less women in therapy. Yet there's more women in therapy and there's more problems in relationships now than ever before. There's masculinity, there's femininity. As a man, we have both of these. As a woman, you have both of these. However, if you try to be everything to everyone all the time, you lose out big time. So if you're a man, be polarizing, embark, embrace your masculinity. And the people, the women you attract in your life will be the opposite, polar, opposite which would be femininity. The ones that don't like you or don't understand, they'll probably have too much masculine energy, to which case it won't work. Attract your opposite. That's how relationships work. Attracting your opposite, your opposite energy. Yeah, you may have commonalities. You may enjoy the same Netflix shows. You may train together sometimes, but at a fundamental biological level, you are different. Men and women are not equal. Yeah, I said it. Men and women are not equal. Now, I'm not saying a man or a woman is better. What I'm saying is we're not equal. As energies in relationships, we're not equal. Only in what society tells us is the polite thing. What social media and fake news tells us we're all equal. We're not. We're not all equal. Women have a particular set of skills that I will never have as a man because I'm not a woman. Men have a particular set of skills. No matter what a woman does, she will never have that exact same set of skills because she's not a man. And it's okay. We have our strengths. And guess what? When we come together, we become more. Now, you might be saying, well, what about if I'm gay? That's absolutely okay as well. Oftentimes in gay or lesbian relationships, 
of the time, same sex relationships. There'll be somebody in that relationship, whether it be two women or two men, that will have more masculine energy. Their partner will have the opposite, more feminine energy. So it works out that way. It's not necessarily gender specific. There have been times in, in when I... I'm aware of guys that have been very, had a very, very strong feminine polarity and their partner, who was female, had a very strong masculine polarity. And it worked in a weird way, even though the, they were polar opposites and the different area of the, of the polarity, it kind of worked. It kind of worked. However, um, that's not the kind of man that I am and that is in the um, minority, should we say. And it's okay if you are that way. But the moral of the story is this, if you're a man, you listen to this, be a fucking man, realise you can be a man, and the women that will want you, desire you, that will love you, that will want you in their life, will crave for you. Do not be beige, be black, be white, be polarising, stand for something. If a man does not stand for something, he will fall for anything, so stand for something. Have a mission that's more important than you, your woman, your kids, more than everything. Be a leader, be a doer, do stuff. Don't just think about it. Don't just mentally masturbate over your caramel, uh, vanilla latte in Starbucks. Do something. Cash your chips in one day. Put all your chips into the middle of the table, so to speak, and roll the dice. Protect loved ones and go for freedom. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Unstuck with Hypnopunk Transformation with Edge. And I've put together an amazing, amazing fact sheet for you. The five ways to become unstuck in your life. If you'd like a copy of this five ways to become unstuck in your own life, just shoot me an email at mail at lukenosis.com. Mail, M-A-I-L at lukenosis, L-U-K-E-N-O-S-I-S.com. Let me know and I'll shoot one of those off to you. And as I always like to finish these shows and say, always believe.